Let's return now to the question we were looking at a few minutes ago. And that is, how do we characterize the spring force acting on cylinder C? Before returning to the options, let's remember that a spring always provides a force that's actually conservative. Also, the spring happens to be internal to the system in our particular problem. So, we can conclude then that what we're really looking for is a change in potential energy according to the way that we've defined it. If we look at options A and B, positive work done on the system, negative work done on the system, these both are referring to forces external to the system and acting on the system from the outside. And clearly that's not the case with the spring because it's part of the system. So we can rule out A and B, and then the two options then are positive change in potential energy or negative change in potential energy. So we have to decide which one of those is correct. To do that, we can return to our definition of change in potential energy. And we have to think about the integrand here. So the dot product of the force in question with a small or differential displacement vector along the path of the object. And if we can characterize that as positive or negative throughout the full path of motion, then we can immediately decide which question, or I'm sorry, which uh, solution is the, the proper one. So let's notice this, that if the dot product happens to be positive throughout the motion of the object, here the cylinder, then that would imply that the total change in potential energy is negative because of the minus in front here. And so we have to check our guess by actually drawing in the force vector on the cylinder. And of course that's to the right because the spring is compressed initially and it decompresses throughout the process. Now the displacement vector, or in this case, the total displacement vector is going to be some vector pointing off at some angle like this because it has to incorporate both the translation to the right of the cylinder as it rolls, but also the movement of the platform upward. And so the combined motion gives us some total displacement like this. And then of course, ds as a vector is just referring to a small or infinitesimal displacement vector at every single point along that path. Therefore, the dot product between these two forces I'm sorry, between the spring force and the displacement vector is always going to involve a cosine of an angle which happens to be right here. And that angle happens to be less than 90 degrees. So that's always positive. So finally, we can make our, our uh, decision based on that. So indeed, this quantity here is always going to be positive throughout the path integral and therefore the total change in potential energy is negative. So now let's look at a second question. So we wanna focus on the kinetic friction force of the platform acting on block B. And let's try to characterize the effect of that force. 